revolution. That's why I'm telling everybody worldwide. This is my world. Revolution. Hello, Jim Lee from Climate Viewer News here. It's June 26, 2015, and I'm going to answer some reader mail. So everybody's asking me about uh, Dutch Sense's video, NASA Accidentally Drains a Van Allen Belt, where he tries to tie uh, radiation belt remediation with a uh, very popular UFO uh, video. Now, I like the NASA video, but I'm sorry, Dutch, I don't think it has anything to do with this. So over here, he's on uh, the Wikipedia page for the Van Allen Belt, and he says, the high voltage orbiting long tether. I guess he assumes that this must be the tether that he saw from the video, but unfortunately it says right here they only performed a preliminary analysis, analysis simulation. They didn't actually put the tether up there. Um, furthermore, there are actually people sucking the Van Allen belts dry, but it wasn't with that tether. So let's try to get this all ironed out real quick. I'm over here on climateviewer.com slash harp, and it's harp in the sky heaters, and you scroll down here, you're gonna see tether panel recommendations. Ooh, tether panel. That's a um, coincidence. So um, what you got here is ionospheric heaters are destroying the Van Allen belts. And you scroll down through this bad boy. And right here, once again, tether panel. Satellite threat due to high altitude nuclear detonation. That's why they're doing it. Here's your high, volt, uh, high voltage orbiting long tether. And that is over on tethers.com slash high volt. And you can see the picture there. And then what you can see is they plan on putting tethers all along the you know, equator right there. And that would uh, cause the radiation in space to slowly just rain out. All right, so they haven't done that, but what they have done is use HARP to do the exact same thing. So this is satellite threat due to high altitude nuclear detonation, Eisenhower Institute, and this is Dennis Papadopoulos from the University of Maryland who proposed this. Dennis Papadopoulos to this day is a member of the MURI project, M-U-R-I, and is a leading uh, researcher for HARP. So let's get to that. It says acknowledge input from DTRA hand Halio study and tether panel harp study. So you go down here to the bottom, what you're gonna see is that harp has been used as a BLF um, injection tool. And what they do is they shoot electromagnetic missiles up into space and uh, these missiles <laughs> scoop radiation out of the sky. So you see here, uh, harp shoots them up, they go up here, they bounce around and when they come back, they rain down on the poles, that is called artificial air glow. Artificial air glow is another term for artificial aurora. So basically it goes like this. You got a tub full of bubbles, you take your hand, you scoop it across the top. That pushing action, that's what they're doing with HARP. These VLF waves, they go into space, they push the radiation, it rides along the Van Allen belts, along the magnetic field lines, and comes back down at the poles in the form of artificial aurora. So you say to yourself, well, if HARP is uh, sucking radiation out of, out of the Van Allen belts, then why would they close it? The reason why is because HARP is now on a boat. They have mobile ionospheric heaters. Um, these are called the Straw Man High Frequency Array. This is also Dennis Papadopoulos right here. He proposed this stuff, and these are mobile VLF, ELF uh, radar um, ionospheric heaters. So you can see right here, ELF Mobile Array Performance, and here's where we want to put a floating harp boat. So um, that's where that went, and they also go on to say, we want to put uh, a test facility down here at Jicamarca, Peru, and explore U.S. sites such as Guam. So um, these ionospheric heaters are pushing radiation out of the space, into the poles and creating artificial aurora. The reason why they're doing it, a couple reasons they claim in uh, their satellite threat due to a high altitude nuclear explosion, they basically say that um, you know, if somebody were to set off a nuclear explosion high in the sky, that that radiation would destroy all the satellites and they want to be able to suck that radiation out. Or if there's a solar flare, such as the Carrington event or a large coronal mass ejection, that all of that uh, extra radiation that's coming in would destroy satellites and potentially power grids, that they could uh, make a mitigation system that would suck it out real quickly. Now, that may sound great on the surface, but again, I do agree with Dutch Sense in his video on the fact that, you know, this is a dangerous practice. It has unknown um, side effects and uh, really need to be publicly you know, looked at by credible scientists. Um, I, this stuff is under the radar and uh, not, not known by anybody. <laughs> Furthermore, uh, there are five major uh, ionospheric heaters in the world. Uh, Hart right here in Gakona, Alaska. We have the Arecibo Array, which is the Arecibo Observatory Enhanced High Frequency Array, something like that. It's at the William E. Gordon Telescope. You can see it right here. There's a little dude with a big antenna. Down here, Jicamarca, Peru, uh, that is actually a super darn, um, which you can see here, big field of antennas, and it has a 4.5 megawatt output. And finally, we'll just skip Sura and go to Norway, and you can see up here in Norway, 
the Tromso array. Now this big line right here, this is another reason we don't need harp anymore. They're building something, my line just went away there. Come back to me line. Um, they are gonna replace harp with this Tromso array and it's called the IceCat 3D. Harp had a five gigawatt output. This radar has a 100 gigawatt output and should be complete by 2016. So I suggest you guys come over here and uh, read all about these ionospheric heaters and check them out. I personally don't like what they're doing and I hope that uh, some people really look into that. And we can also um, rest assured that the NASA is not to blame for all of it. Um, these are definitely scientists from different universities around the globe all involved in controlling space weather. So satellite, uh, saving satellites with radiation belt remediation and modifying space weather with HARP. You heard it here. Um, I hope that that clarifies a lot of questions that people have had. And uh, unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing's going to get better. It's not. I know it's taking over. Revolution. That's why I'm telling everybody worldwide. This is my world. Revolution. Hello, Jim Lee from Climate Viewer News here. It's June 26, 2015, and I'm going to answer some reader mail. So everybody's asking me about uh, Dutch Census video, NASA accidentally drains Van Allen belt where he tries to tie uh, radiation belt remediation with a uh, very popular UFO uh, video. Now, I like the NASA video, but I'm sorry, Dutch, I don't think it has anything to do with this. So over here, he's on uh, the Wikipedia page for the Van Allen belt, and he says, the high voltage orbiting long tether, I guess he assumes that this must be the tether that he saw from the video, but unfortunately, it says right here, they only performed a preliminary analysis, analysis simulation. They didn't actually put the tether.